young and we didn't want to be exposed Even though it was cold, we were never wearing proper clothes Always trying to be cool, trying to be those bad guys Smoking cigarettes behind the school Always trying to be cool, trying to be those bad guys, you know Welcome everyone. Oh, let me just fix this. Oh, there we go. I think we're in the middle. How are we going, everyone? Uh, sorry I couldn't be here yesterday. Um, I did a shoot, obviously, with the new Tamron lens, so I um, had to get, basically, I had to use yesterday, so I thought I'd um, come on today. Um, Mark, no, it wasn't shot in S&Q, it was just shot in 1080p, um, uh, 60, I think it was 1080p, 50 uh, and then it was slowed 50% in post. Uh, so that's what I did there. So let me just pop over to the chat. Just let's see who's here. Let me quit that, quit time player. And I can get rid of that now. Delete shot. Okay. Um, so let's see who's here in the chat. Uh, so Dana's here. Uh, the Great Otway National Park. Oh, yeah. I had a ball yesterday there, Dana. It was so good. Um, <laughs> I'll show you the first image in a second. Uh, it was just stunning. Uh, and I've shot, I've, well, I'll, I'll wait and sort of talk to you about what I did with the Tamron uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, but that is one of my favourite places in uh, the world, actually, the Otway National Park. The waterfalls are stunning. It's like a fairyland with ferns. Um, and it's, just, it's just beautiful. I just love it. And the beauty is that we're, it's only, you know, an, an hour and a half away from my place. And then you've got the beaches next to it and everything. It's just, I just love it. It was just gorgeous. Uh, every time I go there, it just takes my breath away. Um, so who else is Julian? Uh, is he, Barry's here as well. Um, Sean is here. Mark's here having a couple of spelling mistakes, he said. Um, as well uh, master stone setter is saying evening everyone um 
Hogarth is here as well from Ontario. Alex said, hello, David, and everyone else. I'm newer to this stream, but I used to watch Danny and Jason. Cool. Um, yeah, I've been on, I was on Danny and Jason's show a number of times. Um, so I recognize some names here as well. It is a, a, a very similar crew uh, as well. So Alex, welcome. Uh, Hugh said, um, good afternoon in San Diego. Oh, Carrie's just bringing in my Molly. You don't have to show yourself because she's not made up. She's going, no, 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 no. <laughs> Thanks, sweetheart. You could just say hello. Hi. <laughs> uh, she's going, no, no, don't put me on. <laughs> laugh. So I've got my, uh, my Milo here with uh, Aaron's cup that he sent me. I love this mug. Mmm. Milo. Be back to the beer again once it warms up. Um, what else? Uh, Hugh is here as well. Um, Good afternoon from San Diego, California. Mario's here as well. G'day, Mario. Sean is saying, party time, let's do this. Uh, Pen FX said, beautiful composition. Thank you so much. I'm very proud of that video, actually. I did that as a uh, corporate video for that uh, actual organization, for that hotel. Um, and they absolutely loved it. Um, and I had a ball doing it. It's a very, very old hotel. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, it was stunning walking through there and work with the lovely Kiara. So no, it wasn't shot in S&Q. I don't shoot ever in S&Q, Mark, because there's a quality, uh, there's a penalty in the uh, quality when you do do it. Um, it suffers a little bit, so I never use s and I, I shot that nearly all in 1080 50p, um, and then I could slow it down in post when I needed to. Um, how's it going, KSPC? Said George said, uh, greetings from New Jersey. G'day, George. Uh, John said, uh, g'day, David. BMB Films is also here. Ripe Images is saying, hey. Um, Van is saying, uh, hello from Harrisburg, PA. Um, Ripe said, always got to see your live stream when I can. Well, thank you for joining us. Michael's in here as well. G'day, Michael. Is your burger joint open again yet? Um, they were still the best burgers I had in the US. They were beautiful, those burgers. Um, Vlad said, hello from Seattle. Uh, Dane said, hello, haven't been here for a while. Hope you've been doing well. I've been doing very well, Dane. Thank you so much for asking. Chris is also here saying, hello, David. Nice day in Los Angeles. Good Bud Lime Day. Uh, yeah, you guys are lucky because it's summer up there. Although it's really nice here. The weather's been, you know, really quite good. It was beautiful yesterday, actually. It was where I was down the coast down there. It was around 17 degrees, and it was warm as. There was no wind. It was beautiful. Um, it's very strange, actually, because usually when I go into that forest, it's very, very, because um, it's so green, it's a rainforest. It's usually so damp and everything like that, and it really wasn't there yesterday. It was quite mild, and it was a bit bizarre. Um, Carl's also said, uh, hello, David and friends. Hero said, greetings, coffee dudes. Uh, so Ben's here as well. G'day, Ben. Uh, how you going? Um, Brunuta, I think that's how you pronounce it, has said, thumbs up. Love my Tamron 28 to 75. Um, I love that lens too. Right here. Uh, where are we? Right there. Love it. Um, can't wait. Uh, what was she saying? Can't wait. Um, well, I hope so. Girl, maybe not. <laughs> you can never tell sometimes. Um, because it could be brawn as well. Um, transitioning to greatness here in the USA, uh, 1,900 dead so far. Oh, I hope it improves soon for you. Sorry if I've said you're a girl, probably and you're not. Let me know. You can say I'm male or female in there, then I'll know. Sometimes you just can't tell with the names. Um, Mark said, uh, oh, I thought you might use 120 in movie mode. No, I never shoot like that, uh, Mark. It's only ever 50p or a um, uh, 100, uh, it was. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I've just remembered. I shot that, yeah, in 1080, 100. Then I could slow it down to, no. <laughs> I'm getting confused. It was, it was 1080, uh, 50, and then I slowed it down to 25. Yep. I'll get there eventually. I'm still waking up. Dane said, how's COVID going? Well, we're very good here. Um, there's not much uh, virus action here at all. In fact, we're opening up now. Um, we have very few cases, so... Hopefully, uh, in the next um, few weeks, uh, we'll be back to normal. We're very lucky here, Dane, that we're a country that is isolated from everyone else. So they closed the borders, and now they've got it well and truly under control. I mean, there's a few cases here and there, but um, nothing that they can't control. So, in fact, most of the days, there's hardly been any uh, 
cases. So I think we're probably going to be okay as long as they stay on top of it. Um, Steve is um, also here as well. Well, g'day, Steve. All right, so let's get started on the show. Let me just put down here, show start. Oh, did not put that timer in. Oh, good. I hate it when I do that. I might just start it now. My helmet, how long it's been on? Where are we, does it say? Uh, no, I'll just have to do it manually, I think. I'll just do it at the end. All right, so let's get started on the show, and we'll do that right now. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, just noticed too that Michael just said Canon is looking good with their up and coming cameras. Well, he was discussing it here. Um, if the hammer doesn't hit them. Yeah, I don't think it's going to. I think they've learnt their lesson this time though. Hope Sony comes with a great camera on the 26th. Yes, me too. Now my birthday's the 27th. So Kerry, if Sony bring out something amazing, you could buy it for me for my birthday. It's not going to happen. I <laughs> oh, love it. Alex, unbelievable. You have the best intros to your live stream. Where do you get that music? I'll get it from um, Epi. Oh, I always forget it. Let me have a look. Hang on. New window. Um, it is from, I'll tell you the exact site. Epi, epidemic sound. Uh, so it's this site here. Let me just move this to here and I'll show you the site where I get it. Um, so it's called this epidemic sound. All right, that's where I get it from. Uh, I'm not an affiliate for them or anything. Oh, I pay for it. Uh, but the good thing is with them, it ties into your YouTube and also into Facebook uh, and Instagram. So you never have to worry about getting copyright strikes. So even though it's, you know, $150 US, I think, a year, um, it's really good. So I thoroughly uh, recommend them. They're, they're absolutely amazing sites. So, and they have great uh, music as well. So, yeah, that's the only one I'm really subscribed to. So thank you so much, Alex, and thank you so much for saying I have the best intros. Thank you so much. Um, Mario, I'll just answer a couple of these questions too. So, yes, uh, Michael, the, the cameras are looking really good. There's the R5 and the R6. Uh, the R6 is the lower spec model. The R5, I might talk about that soon because the, the, uh, there's rumours now that I think it's going to be announced or released in early July, really early July. And I think there's also a couple of rumours about the pricing it was pretty good. Um, so stay tuned. I might talk about that in another um discussion philip also said uh, anyone in chat like the sigma 105 over the 135 i love the uh, sigma 105 philip the only thing for me is that it was it's closer to the 85 so if i had the choice i'd prefer to say get an 85 and the 135 um but the problem with the 135 is if you're working in very tight enclosures it, it's a little long so the 105 would be perfect in that scenario i mean if you had the money it would be great to have all three lenses if you could afford it i had the sigma 105 and absolutely adored that lens um, i might even play that video or something next week at the start of it because uh, i did it with matisse um, but yeah it was really good i really enjoyed using it super sharp 1.4 um uh f-stop Brilliant. Uh, thanks so much, Alex, for that donation. Uh, Mario said, what are your thoughts about uh, um, so few lenses lacking internal zooming? It doesn't bother me at all, Mario, to be honest. Um, I, I mean, look, I suppose you could get compromised if you're, say, at beaches and areas like that where you've got that, you know, if you look at the Tamron, um, you know, that you've got the, the lens that does come out. Um, so... Yeah, it could, I suppose you could in theory get some stuff in there, but I'm not worried about it. I mean, I'd prefer to save the cost and still get a brilliant lens um, than to say uh, have that all internal, have it much bigger and heavier, etc. So, yeah, there's compromises, but I'm...
comfortable working with that. And I've never really had a problem with dust or anything like that and things. I mean, they're pretty well sealed. Um, so I'm not worried about it, Mario. Um, yeah, Ben said epidemic sound. Yeah, Mark said, Kerry must be thinking you're already a few birthdays ahead. <laughs> Perhaps, Mark. <laughs> I think I probably am. Um, Henry said, the Sigma 105 has been working very well for me. It's heavy, but I don't mind it. Yeah, I loved it. I, I, I really did love it. Uh, Tony said, hi, guys. Matthew said, hey, David, great to watch you live. Good to see you here, Matthew. Uh, Michael said, the Sigma 105 is like carrying around a new baby born baby. <laughs> it is pretty big. I know. Now, all right, let's get started anyway on the Tamron. Um so yesterday, I, that's the reason why I never came on live, I took it out and did my first shoot with it. Now, the, the, the interesting thing was yesterday, um, I wanted to try this out to do a dance video because I love doing um, dance videos with, with the girls, obviously. And I thought this might be a really interesting lens to sort of just take a lens that will do everything. You know, if I wanted to travel light or whatever and do travel and also do some work and things like that, that I could use a lens like that to... to well, to get some decent results. So I know a lot of people are sort of saying that the the Tamron, um, the 28 to 200 is more like not a professional lens, but I'm not sure about that after using because I'm very happy with how it worked. Um, so I thought what I'd do for the day is I'd do some still shots, do some dancing shots with um, Renee, and also do um, some travel-y type shots as well, like travel down the coast. So I used it for a whole series of different things. So stay tuned for the full review. I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek today, just so that you can see um, what it's what the lens is like uh, as a sneak peek. They, they haven't been taken into Photoshop or anything. They're just, um, oh, there's one which I have, which I'll show you. I, I posted that this morning. All the others have just had very, very minor editing just done in Lightroom that I could just show you what you're sort of going to get out of camera without much editing at all. And I'll show you the one that I've edited. It was the one I just posted in the photography videography school this morning. Um, so it, it was really good. So let me take you through it, and then I'll sort of summarise how I'm thinking about um, the... Um, what I think about the lens. So let me go over to here and let me click on this. So this was the one that I was talking about um, was the image that I've edited in Photoshop. Uh, it was really funny because we, we pulled up into the parking area and um, it was quite well, I would say it was quite warm. I was surprised how warm it was, but I think it had rained overnight. So obviously all the steam was lifting off the off the ground and everything like that. So it was quite misty in um, in uh, the whole forest area. And I, I decided I'd grab uh, Renee and I wanted to get her to dance in this nice little foresty section here before we walked down to a waterfall area. And um, I looked around the corner and I just walked into this spot and the light was like this. I thought, oh my God. <laughs> I immediately grabbed Kerry and said, Kerry, come over here quick, really quick, grab your phone, because Kerry took a really good iPhone picture as well. Uh, but it was just stunning. It's one of these things that you're there for that second that the light hits that perfect spot, uh, and it's just gorgeous. Oh, the funny thing is I took smoke, and I did let some off after this, but I didn't need it because this was exactly as the forest was. And so there's no uh, manipulation done here to the light beams or anything. This is all natural without added smoke or anything. Um, and it was just unbelievable. And I was, I couldn't believe it. And, and I actually grabbed Renee. I hope the video looked worked because um, I was rushing around that quick because it only lasted a, a probably five, six minutes. Um, so I got this shot. Uh, and took this shot. I took a couple of others too, but I thought I'd show you this one. Uh, so I got this shot, and then I immediately after doing this shot, I stood Renee sort of in the beams, well, a little bit to the right of them, and she did the dance routine in there. So you'll see this also in video too. So I hope it worked out in video. I don't think the video, I think once we grabbed Renee in the video, it wasn't quite as strong as what this is though, um, because this was the peak of it. Uh, and like I said, it only lasts five minutes. I went back uh, a second later because I wanted to do another bit of uh, a dance in there and it had gone. Uh, and then I tried to add smoke and it just didn't work. The sun, I think, went behind some clouds actually so that the beams just completely disappeared. So this was shot at uh, 1 200th of a second at f5.6. Um, it was ISO 800 and it's 28 mil. So this is as wide as the lens goes. Uh, and like anything with a 28 mil lens, sometimes uh, you, you do have to think, 
if you were traveling well you may need to go for a, a also have a wider type lens as well if you did want to go wider than this you know something like a, a 12 14 or 16 millimeter um but this sure shows you the the sort of what you can get at the 28 mil um and it, it was great and i have to tell you i was so happy with using the lens for the whole day because it was really interesting because i could go through this whole range that i'll show you uh coming right through so that that's that's the only edited image. The other images have only had Lightroom editing done. Um, so as we drove into the place, um, there was kangaroos everywhere and it was really nice. And I thought, wow, I've got a, <laughs> I pulled over the car and I thought I'll try and grab a, a shot straight away um, of this kangaroo. And I noticed that it's Joey is, is next to it there. Um, but th like I said, these haven't even had sharpening or anything in them yet. And if I bring this up and let it, um, build. Um, this was, uh, I just grabbed the camera out, and whipped it around. Uh, this was 1 200 the second at f5.6, and it's 190 mil. Um, and once I take this into Photoshop and sharpen it, that's going to be beautiful. So the, the lens does, and I'll show you a couple of other pics a little bit further on. Um, the lens does tend to have. Uh, it is really sharp, actually, for for this type of travel zoom and what you're paying for this lens. It really is nice and sharp um, and, and that surprised me in a way and it's great through the whole focal range so that was great you know you've got this ability to say take a wide angle 28 mil and then immediately zoom up to 200 and get these sort of shots for travel and it's very very quick the autofocus is super quick and i'll show that once i do the video review because i've tested it and you'll be able to see that working um, which is great. And then we went down and did some images just of Renee in the forest. Now, the, the funny thing was that um, on the day, <laughs> I, was I was rushing around so much trying to get all the gear and everything ready that I grabbed my pro photo because I thought I'd, I'd light Renee up and do some flash work and stuff like that. <laughs> I forgot the trigger. <laughs> so luckily... I could use the continuous lighting on the flash and I thought, oh, thank God I could use the continuous lighting on the flash. Otherwise, I mean, this would have been really awkward in these positions um, without any lighting at all because it's so dark in this forest. I mean, the forest is actually really quite dark. So it was just lucky that um, Kerry was holding the, the flash um, a little bit uh, away from the camera there and I could take these shots and at least light Renee up. Now this is showing at 77 mil so these are just showing you ideas about how the, the lens works over a complete sort of range of focal lengths. Uh, this was 180th of a second. Now people are talking about how does this work with shutter speed. Well again remember you, there's no stabilization in this lens so this is why I wanted to show you how or what you can get uh, with the images um, holding it hand holding i don't even know let me check what this is like because you do have to be careful um when you hand hold yeah see that's perfect there's nothing wrong with that at all i mean i don't know whether that's going to come through uh youtube with compression and everything but but that's sharp and that's handheld at 180th of a second and it's at 77 mil uh, again this one down here uh, i've shot now at 200 millimeter so you can see the difference immediately between and, and this is just zooming the lens from basically 77 to uh, 200. And then this one here is basically 68. So I've shot a whole range of um, focal lengths all the way through. Uh, this one at 200 mil was shot at 160th of a second. And again, if we look, I'm just checking to see if it is sharp because I haven't even looked yet. Perfectly sharp. Um, so... Uh, like I'm saying again, it's not a problem as long as hand holding something like this uh, if you have the technique to hold it. And this is what I'm saying. Some can't do that because some, you know, have shaking hands. And, and you know, I mean, if you, if, if you sort of, if you're taking a shot and you're sort of sitting here and you, you know, you feel yourself <laughs> sort of shaking like this when you're taking it, well, you're just going to have to raise your shutter speed up. Uh, because that that could be an issue remember the the cameras though have in body stabilization so i don't find it an issue that the lenses don't have stabilization i know a lot of people whinge about that but i'm showing you real life results here uh, so you're going to sort of see what you'll get at these shutter speeds um, and i'm able to hand hold it and get perfect results really all that i'm happy with um, so that's shot at 200 mil so it's giving you an idea about the lens at 200 and like i said it surprised me how sharp this lens actually is it, it really is uh there this was iso 2000 now guys remember i had to use continuous light here if i was using flash i would have brought that 
ISO way down. But due to the fact that I had to use um, uh, the uh, continuous light of the Profoto, I had to raise the ISO. That's why it's a little bit noisy. Um, but you can see here how sharp it is. There's nothing wrong with the sharpness at all. And I, I probably think, um, I think I did do a test with a 70 to 200 F4. Um, oh, let me come back. Uh, I think I did do a test with the 200, uh, the 70 to 200 F4. Um, and I think this is probably a bit sharper, um, but I'll have to wait and see the full results later on. Uh, but I'm certainly happy with the results of this at 200. Uh, really good, in fact. Uh, like I said, this one too was shot at uh, 1 60th of a second. This is 68 mil. Uh, and again, you know, if we wanted to sort of check sharpness of the lens is, is really, really good. Again, the ISO is, is high due to the fact that I'm using the continuous light to light up Renee here. Uh, if this was done with flash, I wouldn't have needed to do that. Uh, I could have just exposed more for ambient and filled in. Uh, the macro component of this is really nice. Uh, this one too was shot at 28 mil um, and it's one one hundredth of a second uh, and it was shot at f3.2. Um, and you can see that, that this is what I love about these Tamron lenses, how you can almost use them as a macro. Uh, and this was just brilliant. I mean, I loved it. I had a ball shooting all these macro things that I'll show you later on. In fact, that's one image there. Uh, this is another one uh, that I took here as well. The rendering is really nice. I mean, I, I quite like the rendering. Um, this is another one that was shot as well. Um, sort of showing that and the last one macro is this one as well so you can use it as a sort of makeshift macro which which is good in itself uh, I was very happy with that uh, again just some sort of dance sort of portrait shots that we did I wanted um, to capture Renee with the waterfall in the background um, this is shot at 70 uh, 79 mil so sort of showing it getting close to your 85 for how it looks as a portrait lens um, this is another one that we did too with one of uh, Renee smiling I think the rendering is really quite nice this was shot at f4.5 um, there's a dance one that I've done here which is shot up 4.5 as well uh, one two hundredth of a second um, which is going to be lovely when I edit these images I think this will look beautiful once I edit uh, these images I then wanted to try it with a slow shutter speed so I used um, a filter and uh, did some slow shutter speed type work to see how it worked with that now this was 28 mil this was shot at one second um, this was put on a I actually did this on a gimbal um, so I just stuck it on my uh, Moser Air uh, Moser AK2000S and shot these with a gimbal and they're really nice uh, you know I'm, I'm very happy with um, how it looks you can see there's a fraction of movement there that's due to the fact that I've got it on a gimbal um, if I used a tripod it would have been much better let me see if this one's any better uh, yeah, that's much sharper. Uh, so the second one is much sharper there. Um, the first one had a fraction of movement on it, but the second one is is really nice. Um, it, like I said, if you did this with a, a tripod, it'd be spot on. It'd, it'd be just amazing. I wanted also to try some backlighting to see how the lens went um, with because there was strong backlighting coming through here. You can see it at the back through Renee. The focus was terrific, really, really good. Uh, and the tracking followed uh, Renee walking the whole time. Uh, also, I wanted to show the zoom range. So this is the, the full zoom range. This is 28 mil of this tree. Now I zoomed into this area uh, after that. And you can see here that I've zoomed in. Uh, so that's the sort of zoom range that you can get uh, from this to this. Um, and you can see if I bring it up, it's really actually quite sharp. I mean, it, it, for what you're using, which you think is a, a, you know, a sort of variable aperture focused lens, like a travel type lens, I'm surprised at how sharp this is at 200 mil. Uh, I really am. It shocked me actually uh, how good it actually is. Because often with these type of lens, particularly as you get to the longer end, uh, the, the sharpness suffers. Well, this hasn't suffered at all. Uh, I think it's really good. In fact, I think this is probably better than my 70 to 200 F4. But stay tuned. I'll have to check the results. But I'm just going by memory. Uh, to show you portrait lenses here, um, this was shot at... Uh, 191 mil to sort of let you see how this will work if you're shooting like that uh, 5.6 
as well. And this one was interesting because I wanted to show um, to the sort of how you can hold this and get a reasonable result. Now, I'm not saying this is perfect and you'll see it when I blow it up, but we were driving out and we could see these kangaroos in the distance and I thought I'd shoot one at 200 mil. We're a long way away. Um, and this was shot at one one hundredth. Now, in theory, you really should shoot a minimum of one two hundredth uh, if, you've, if you're 200 mil because you should at least match the sh uh, the um, your focal range. Well, if I enlarge that up, now remember this has had no sharpening in it. When I, if I take this into Photoshop and enlarge this up, uh, sorry, sharpen this, um, it's really going to pick up the edges and and make this really you know quite good. I mean, uh, passable uh, for sure. Um, so you know it, it's it's great. Oh, now let me just turn the filters off because I'll just show you. I also did some. Um, a6400 stuff. Now they haven't even had any editing at all. Let me just go back to the library. Um, where were we? Because I'll, I'll just show you a couple of these. Um, A6400. Let me go here. And metadata. Oop. Oh, where have they gone? Try to find where they've gone. Oh, there we go. All right, so let me go to A6400 because I, I thought that I'd use the A6400 for with you uh, to give you an idea about how it looks. Um, you know, with the with the A6400. Again, like I said, these have had no editing done. This is directly straight out of camera. But these have had nothing done. So you know, if if I bring these up a little bit, um, lift the shadows just a touch. Uh, and stuff like that, they'll be really pretty. Uh, I just wanted to try these. Now, the thing was too, I wanted to try it with Reach. Now we went down and, and looked at some surfing and things, and these were, guys were so far away, uh, like a real um, distance away. I'm not sure that how far away they were, but I just thought I'd see if I could capture some surfers getting out there. See, that's out of focus. That's out of focus. Let me see if I've got any that are reasonable. See, the A6400 has an issue. I can see that straight away looking at this. Now, that's probably – the A6400 has no stabilisation. Now, I was hand-holding these, uh, and it's 1 one twenty fifth of a second. Um, so clearly um, – that's not bad, though. That's considering, really, uh, that this is 200 mil. So it's possible. Now, the thing I did wrong here was I should have really upped that um, – I should have upped the shutter speed. If I'd upped the shutter speed, I wouldn't have had an issue. Remember, you've got, with the A6400, you've got no stabilisation at all. The A6600 will be slightly better because it does. Uh, the A7 III and the A9 both have stabilisation, so they were terrific uh, in uh, working without the uh, with the low sort of shutter speeds, whereas the A6400 would suffer a little bit. But that's pretty good. I mean, they were a fair way away as well, um, and that's not bad either. Uh, I bet you if I blow it up, though, they're probably going to be a little bit blurry. Oh, yeah, not yeah, not bad, though. Uh, but if I'd up the shutter speed on that, like I said, 1 25th of a second just wasn't nowhere near enough um, for that type of shoot. Uh, but when you're working normally, uh, it, you know, it's not an issue. You can sort of see with these that uh, the images are fine. Um and that they would work easily. So th it's nice. And look at the compression you're getting in the background through here too. And these have had no, um, like I said, uh, exposure te uh, adjustments or anything at all done. So I thought I'd do a test on these to see how it worked with the A6400, and it worked really quite beautifully. In fact, uh, if you watched your shutter speed, um, you'd be fine. Like I said, those surfers, that was definitely an issue because I hadn't upped the shutter speed enough. Uh, but they're not bad. And yeah, no, there's a little bit of movement there. See that? Yep. So one or two hundred, that's not enough. So you would have to put your shutter speed up quite a bit. They were a long, long way away. Um, but I did do some tests with that. So stay tuned for that as well. Like I did Renee walking and stuff. So I'm going to be able to um, check what they're all like once we uh, go. And this was all shot with the A6400 as well. Oh, that looks beautiful. Um, so stay tuned for that as well. Um, so do you have any questions about how it went? Let me just quit this. I'll come back to the questions for a minute. Um, and let me go back to there. So overall, um, I was amazed. I mean, I was actually amazed how well. If you look at this, it's almost exactly the same size as the uh, 28 to 70. 
Um, it worked beautifully. Uh, the video autofocus and everything was, was fantastic as well. So I had no issue with that as well. It, it seemed to work really great. The uh, dead silent, so you don't hear it at all. There's no like clicking, there's no sort of whirring noises and things like that. So uh, it's a great travel lens. And when you looked at those images that I did, particularly with the um, A7 III and the A9, not having the stabilization is not an issue at all. Um, the A6400, uh, you would have to up your shutter speed. That's clear, and I, I can see that when I looked at those results. They were done really quickly as I got to the end of the day, and I wanted to grab some shots um, just using it very, very long, and I should have upped that. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, P Peter just came in too, just checking uh, by, just saying, hi, I need to go and prepare for my 10 a.m. No worries, Peter. Thanks for chucking in, buddy. Um, so... I'm really happy with it. I, I think it's actually an amazing travel um, lens. And in fact, I said to Kerry, if we do go traveling again, once things even out, you know, we can start traveling again, it might be that I pick one of these up because to use one of these lenses, to say use that 28 to 200 and then use it, say, with a, a more of a one wide angle or fast prime, uh, in case if you're working in very low light scenarios, you'd have the perfect travel kit um, and it gives you a really long focal range, particularly if you use it on the APS-C. Like those surfers were a, a real long way away. Like I shot, I was way away. Um, and it, it, the, a couple of them I could see were fine. If I'd up the shutter speed, that would have been perfect. Uh, that was more my technique uh, than the lens. So, you know, it's interesting. The release date's the 25th, John, I believe. Um, so it's soon. It's in about a week. Um, but let me just check some of the questions just to see what people are saying. If anyone has any questions about it, um, uh, oh, I answered that about the internal zooming, uh, the Sigma one we went through. Um, Dave said, I jumped that Sigma bandwagon and I got myself the Sigma 16. That's what I'm using now, the 16 1.4. I love it. Um, Michael said Sigma has a great line. It has. And I'm going to talk about the 100 to 400 in the next story coming up. Um, Mark said, okay, my lift is here shooting at the Sunshine Coast. Have fun, Mark. Um, what else? John said, yes, I heard uh, Frono Photo say it wasn't a professional end. Yeah, but I'm, I mean, I've just showed you what you could do with it. I, I, I think that's rubbish. I, I don't believe that at all, to be honest. I could use this easily in professional shooting. No, not a doubt at all. There's compromises though, guys. I mean, you've got to understand, and, and this is why in some ways uh, you, you're better off with a consistent lens because remember when you change this, like when you zoom, I shoot manual. Um, so every time I zoomed, I had to change my settings because obviously your f-stop changes. Now that can be a problem. The way of probably getting around that is to shoot in aperture mode or something like that and then have your ISO set at auto ISO and then you wouldn't have to worry about that because everything would automatically change for you and you could just change your exposure compensation. So there's ways to get around it. But yes, I mean, look, I, I, I you could use this as a professional lens if you wanted to. This is unbelievably better than anything you would get like in a kit lens or anything like that. Like it's, and I've showed you the results. The results are really beautiful in what you get with it. But if you shoot manual like me, it's not that easy due to the fact that the aperture changes every time you, you know, you, you sort of change uh, the zoom range and then you've got to adjust your exposure. So yes, that that's a compromise. I, I completely understand that. If you shot aperture mode, it wouldn't be a problem. So I would say you could shoot professionally with this, no doubt. But I've got no doubt at all, and I've just showed you the results. Like I said, only one of those images have been done in Photoshop. All the others, I'd be happy to give those to anyone. So I, I don't. I sort of disagree there. I think you could use it as a professional lens. Uh, Michael said, uh, nice shot, David. Thank you, Michael. Um, Flying High Low said, I've also forgotten the trigger at home. It was really embarrassing. Yeah, I laughed. Luckily, it wasn't a paid shoot. We did this. Renee just did it for the day. I said, look, I'll do the shoot for you for nothing if I can share it all on YouTube and, and everything. And she was fine with that. Originally, she actually asked me if um, to do it as a paid shoot because she wanted a dance video done. Um, and rather than say... Uh, I charge her for that. I thought, wow, what a great thing because I needed to get someone to do this test uh, yesterday. So I said, look, I'll do it for you for nothing uh, as long as I can share it all. So she got something out of it and I did as well. 
Um, like the second better, beats the Sigma as far as focus. Um, yeah, it was funny that, yeah, we're talking about the trigger. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it when I opened up my case. I said to Kerry, oh, no, I've left the trigger at home um, because I set her up to do one shot. And uh, that's when I realised, uh, thank God, I had the pro photo that had the continuous light that I could use it and light her up in that forest. Uh, otherwise, I would have been screwed. Um, I mean, I wasn't being paid, but I still would have been upset because we'd gone a long way to get there and everything else, so I could still do the shoot. wasn't ideal, though, because I couldn't, like I said, I, I had to raise the ISO to compensate for that. Um, David said... Um, I love my 70 to 200 G after purchasing the Tamron 78 to 25, uh, th sorry, to 28 might have bought this lens if it was available back then. Now for the 24 to 105 G fills the gap. Uh, nice to have more choices now. Yeah, I know. I'd love to do a, a test between the um, 70 to 180 and this at 180 and see the sharpness difference. I might surprise you. They may be pretty close. Um, although you can't shoot at 2.8. That's the difference. You know, you're going to be shooting at 5.6. Um, what else? George said, thanks for the honest Tamron update. I feel assured about my pre-order. Can't wait. Yep, you'll love it, George. I, I think it's a really good lens. Like I said, there's compromises with everything. You have to watch your shutter speed um, and things like that. But as a travel lens, particularly a go all rent lens that you could just go somewhere for the day and not have to change lenses, it was brilliant. And you show, you, I showed you the results, so, you know, I'm not lying. Um, Peter, uh, Peter, yeah, was just checking in. The release date, yeah, I think was the 25th here in Australia. I'm not sure about elsewhere, though, John. You'd have to check. Um, would, uh, would have been able to get by with it plus a wide prime on your trip? Yes, I would. Uh, definitely. Th this would have been a brilliant lens that I could have taken to the USA when I did it. And, you know, it might have been that I could have probably got by with just taking that and my 24. Um that would have been brilliant. You know, and then if you wanted to travel really light, you could take the 10 to 18 and use that at least from 12 to 16 because I've used that often on full frame. Um, that's why I want Sony to bring out or someone to bring out a really nice wide angle line, prime lens. Uh, I'd love that because boy, would that be good. I mean, th this, this would be the ultimate travel lens, particularly if you have like a quick prime with it or something or a nice wide that can go with it to get that wider aspect. Remember, you're limited to 28, so it may not be wide enough sometimes. Um, and I did find that a couple of times yesterday that it wasn't wide enough. But I had to sort of persist because I wanted to review it and work with it. But boy, was it, it's a great combo. It really is a great combo. Um, Alex said, comparison with the 70 to 180. Well, it's hard, it's hard to test. Look, the 2.8 aperture is the difference, Alex. But remember, you know, at 5.6, when you're dealing with... Um, where are we? Uh, let me just go back again. We need, I've just got to bring it back. Um, library. Well, I can even show you on this. I mean, it doesn't matter. I can show you on that one. I mean, when you're dealing with things like this, uh, and, you know, and this is, this is F5. I mean, that background is lovely out of focus. Like, I'd be happy to, to use that in anything. You know, and you're looking here. This was, remember, this was shot with the A6400. So um, this was one four hundredth of a second. That's why now this is sharp. Uh, it's f5 ISO one hundred, and it's well, it's one thirty three millimeter. So if I went to two hundred mil, like you know, if you're looking at some of these, which were two hundred mil, let me see if I can find a decent one. If you're looking at these, that's two hundred mil. The the background's going to be gone completely. I mean, you can see these clouds in the background have gone. So at 200 mil, well, actually, this is even more because this is the A6400. Uh, you know, what would it be? Probably around, I don't know what the thing is, probably getting close to 300 mil or something. Uh, let me just go back to the library. Um, when you're looking at these, like these, uh, it's nicely. If you're looking at the, you know, the kangaroo there, the background's thrown out nice. That was at 189. This is on the A7 III. Um, so they're all... Um, you know, nicely uh, out of focus. If you're looking at, you know, this one here, which was the A7 III as well, it's lovely, beautiful out of focus. Uh, you know, checking these all out. I mean, when you're using it as the macro, you can sort of see here that, you know, that you're getting that lovely depth of field. Now that's at 115 millimeter. Um, these ones, you can sort of see that, you know, that that background is lovely and out of focus. That's at 79, that's at F4.5. So don't be too, 
you know, upset that you can't get that 2.8 aperture the whole way through. Uh, you know, and the out of the depth of field, I love shooting at around 5.6 anyway. So 4.5 on a full frame camera is, uh, you know, you get quite a nice blur in the background. Now, I could have gone to 2.8 and you wouldn't have even seen that waterfall. Yes, I understand that. But it's nice to actually see the waterfall. You know, so there's two sort of ways of looking at it that I've got that ability to show that. You know, if I didn't do that, see, this was shot at um, f4.5 as well. But this is wider, so you'll notice now it's wider, so there's more in focus at the background. When you increase your um, focal range, the background starts to blur out. Like, if I'd shot this at 200, uh, that that waterfall would have gone. So, you know, it, it's... If you look at compression, the compression of that lens alone makes it worth it because if you do need to shoot at that, you know, that, that 200 sort of mil range, well, look at this. Look at the beautiful out of focal back uh, in here. This is lovely out of focus range, uh, sort of out of, you know, blur, bokeh, I should say, in the background on this. She's tack sharp uh, and the background's thrown out completely. So you can get really good depth of field. And this is 5.6. So it shows you what you can get with a, uh, a longer lens at 5.6. Um, so let me just quit Lightroom. And I'll come back to the questions. Yeah, I think sometimes people are too, um, you know, they're, 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 they believe too much that you have to have a 2.8 aperture and you don't. Uh, you definitely don't to get a decent result. Um, so I think the comparison will be pretty good. Um, but the, the difference is, look, the 70 to 180 is definitely probably, I wish I had that lens and I could do a direct comparison now against them. But I'm surprised, I am actually surprised, guys, how well that lens went. I really am. And I've showed you, I've showed you I can't lie, I've showed you exactly what it can produce. Um, so you've seen the results that you can get from this lens. Um, how does it compare to the, the Sony 24 to 240? It'd kill it. Uh, it would kill that lens, yep. Uh, Matthew said, the joys of YouTube and slow internet. When I look at your pics, the live stream went down to 24, 240p. Oh, boy. Um, what else have we got? Uh, should I go for the 70 to 180 or both? I mean, John, if you had the choice, I'd get both. I mean, I, I definitely would get both, and I probably will one day. Um, I'll get the 70 to 180 eventually when I sell my Sony 70 to 200, uh, 70 to 200 F4, because I'm going to sell that to get the 70 to 180 eventually. But I definitely will get that uh, once I um, get a... Um, uh, do go traveling. So when the travel and everything like that starts to pick up next year, I may, I probably will get that lens actually the next time I go and do a big uh, uh, travel trip. I mean, for the US, it's $750, I think. Like, it's a bargain. I know money's money, but for that cost, and I've showed you the results, that lens is a bargain for what it is. I think that will sell, it'll sell like crazy, I think, this lens. Um. What else? Lots of YouTube and slow internet when looking at your pics, the live stream. Oh, yeah, I read that before. Um, this looks like an awesome lens. It is, Matthew. Yeah, it, it does. It looks really good. Um, Voigtlander makes a very highly regarded 10 millimeter prime, but it's only 5.6. Yeah. I mean, that's not an issue usually, though, with a wide ang angle lens. I mean, that's okay um, because, you know, I don't think you need, you know, like you don't need a 2.8, but I would like it in case if I'm dealing with really dark environments where I wouldn't have to raise the ISO. Dwayne's here as well. Hi, Dwayne. How are you? Uh, hey, I bought the Fuji um, X100V. Boy, good on you. Boy, I love that uh, camera. I'd love to see how it compares to the A6600. Wow. Congratulations, Dwayne. That's really good. All right, so let's go on to, um, yeah, John's also saying, yes, I need to sell the 70 to 200 first. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just waiting for a little bit longer. Hopefully prices won't be too bad. All right, so let's go to the first story of the day. Apart from that, um, so there's a couple of wild rumours coming around. Um, there's, what's that, someone's... Um, uh, all right, so let's look at the R5, uh, sorry, the A5. There's rumours that Sony are going to release an A5. Now, I think this is interesting because um, I, I, I quite believe this because Nikon have just announced or there's rumours they're going to announce two uh, lower-end cameras. So I think this probably would be true. Um, I think what's going to happen here is they're going to release a lower-ended model. Now, whether it looks like this, uh, I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, it, it's... 
I, I do think they probably will release something that they can offer at the cheap end. Now, I'm not sure whether it will be even the A6 100 body. I mean, uh, who knows? But it's certainly an interesting um, rumour, this. And they're saying that they Sony registered two cameras. They're talking about it down here. Um, I'm just trying to get my thoughts straight. Um, they registered two in camera. One is a high end because it's got the Wi-Fi module, and that's what they're saying is going to be the A7S III. And one more consumer orientated cameras because it will be produced in China. Uh, both are going to be announced pretty soon, probably in late June, early July timeframe. Uh, the high end camera is likely to be the A7S III successor. And the second camera is a new kind of full frame camera. So this is interesting. I mean, what do you guys think um, about this? Um, so it's going to be, they're saying an A5, so a low end. It probably will be in this sort of similar body. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see what's there. But it doesn't surprise me because, like I said, Canon have been sort of um, hinting that they're going to offer lower-end models. Nikon have just announced that they're going to do two. So it doesn't surprise me at all. Um, so anyway, stay tuned. I just wanted to show that. There wasn't much about that at this stage. Um, the Sigma lens, which is the 100 to 400, 5, uh, f5 to 6.3. So it is a variable aperture lens. That, that wouldn't bother me, though. I'd be quite comfortable um, with that. Um, for that focal range. Uh, it looks really nice, actually. Uh, there's a whole stack of information now about this, obviously, and I'll show you some pics uh, in a minute of it um, working out. But the price is really aggressive because I think they're saying it's only, what was it? When I read it. Um, I think it was only around a thousand. Yeah, nine hundred and forty-nine dollars United States dollars. So this is really aggressive. They're saying it's going to be available on July the tenth, twenty twenty, for nine hundred and forty-nine USA dollars. So this is really good. Uh, it looks like a great lens. I'd love to try it. Um, looks nice. Uh, the uh, design looks pretty good. Looks like you've got a few controls on there. Uh, I'm not sure whether they'll show you what those are. Um, let me just see if it mentions anything. Um, introduction of two teleconverters designed for Sigma mirrorless lenses as well. So there's two of those as well. Um, there's a 1.4 and a two times as well. So are they saying that works with the Sony uh, FE mount? I hope so. Wow, that's pretty cool if it is. I'm not sure yet. Um, there's a new Sigma dock. Availability of the Sigma 16, 1.4, 30, 1.4, 56. Uh, oh, L mount. So that's L mount. Yeah, it may not be for the E mount at this stage. Um, but it looks like we're going to get that fairly soon release for $949. Now, to show you what it looks like, um, out, it really does have a massive telescopic <laughs> lens, though. If you look at this, uh, the barrel is huge that comes out of this one. Um, but like I said, that wouldn't bother me at all just because they've kept it uh, fairly nice and small uh, when you're looking at it you can sort of see uh, see it there um, in some pictures of how it looks i would love to try this one uh, i think it would be uh, amazing i'm just trying to see if it shows the controls no looks like it's got your lock um, to stop it uh, creeping down it looks like you've got your um, manual focus and stuff override there as well um, but good does it say it's got stabilization i'm just trying to see if it does it mention stabilization anywhere? Let me just have a look. Um, so it's got 16 groups and 22 elements. Um, what else? It's a superior image quality. Uh, Sigma lens specially designed for full frame mirrorless cameras. I don't know if it mentions it. Fast AF. Um, shooting video and eye tracking very smooth. Um, high levels of opt uh, optimal performance. It's not mentioning it. Can someone let me know in the chat too whether you've heard whether it actually has stabilization? Doesn't mention, I don't think. Yeah, the, the teleconverters are only for the Sigma L mount. So that that's confirmed looking at that. So it's... Um, Oh, so it does have a, a optical stabilization. Thanks for that. Yeah, they just said in the chat. So that's cool. I mean, again, look, now we're getting more and more lenses for Sony. Uh, you know, this may be, obviously, it's a much cheaper version than, say, getting the Sony 100 to 400. It's going to be interesting to see how the quality compares uh, on this. I'd love to get this to try out. I mean, I'd love to give it a go. It would be really good. Um and the last story before I open up Q&A, look, there's only a few stories today. Sony are going to replace those faulty SD cards.
have now said that they're going to replace all of them. Um, so if you do have one, uh, they will replace them. Um, I've lost a bit of faith in the Sony cards because I've had three that have failed. Um, and I had one that had that video memory uh, video problem, which corrupted video. So I think from now on, I'm probably going to stick with uh, the SanDisk cards, I think. I, I don't think I'm going to buy another Sony card again. I, I just, ha I've lost sort of <laughs> trust in it because I've had three fail um, and I've never had a SanDisk card fail. So I think I may not get them. But at least Sony have done the right thing. Um, they've said that they're going to replace any of the faulty memory cards that you've got, but that's not going to help if you have a corruption and, you know, just whatever you do, make sure you're backing up your files onto two cards. That's the critical thing, and that's what saved me in each of those cases. So let's open it up to Q&A, guys. Um, if any, any questions you have at all? Uh, yeah, we are saying, they are saying it has stabilisation. Well, that's good, isn't it, Alex? It's great that they've got that for that price range. It's terrific. Um so Dwayne was saying he was happy with these Fuji cameras. So that's great. Oh, great. I'm glad you're happy with those, Dwayne. John said you need to say yeah, need to sell a 7200 first. Greg said prices seem to be improving a bit. Well, thank God for that, <laughs> Greg. <laughs> they couldn't have got much worse. Hopefully they will improve, uh, you know, in the coming days. So that'd be fantastic. Uh, I think this lens, the, the Tamron lens that I showed is about $1,200 here in Australia. It's $750 in the US, uh, USA. Um, so I'm not sure what it is in Europe and stuff, but but fantastic. I was really surprised and really liked it. Um, so stay tuned for the review anyway. Um, if it has a similar body to, that we're talking about the uh, Sony A5, if, if it has a similar body to the A6000 series, I can't um, imagine how awkward it will be with the 200 to 600 millimeter lens on it. Yeah, it is tough if you're dealing with such a, a small body, that's for sure. Wondering if Tamron will be coming out with something similar. Possibly. I think now that Tamron, I, I was surprised how quickly they brought this out after the 70 to 180. It, it shocked me, actually. Um, I, I was quite surprised, and I couldn't believe it when Tamron contacted me. I mean, I knew before you guys, but I, I couldn't believe when they contacted me to say that this was coming out. I thought, wow, that was so soon after the 70 to 180. Um, it has surprised me, though, about how good it is. Uh, as a travel lens, I don't think there's anything better out there. I really don't. Um, I'm just checking, too, what other people are saying. Uh, they're all saying yes that that lens does have stabilization um, so that's good um, Richard said if it's stabilized and has all the controls that the G Master has except only one focus hole button instead of the three available on the GM yep uh, one focus hole button is fine uh, I mean I wouldn't worry about that at all Gene says how does everyone feel about the ProGrade SD cards I've never used those uh, are you talking about ProGrade or the Sony cards uh, they're not they're just the Sony ones are just classified as tough, aren't they? I think ProGrade is a separate brand. Um, Tony said, "Any news on the Sony? No, they, they, we're hoping that they're going to announce something around the twenty sixth or so, or early July. They're saying now. Hope it's soon. Um, so we should know about that within a week or so. I'm hoping. So who knows? Um, the Tamron is a one thousand three hundred in Canada. Yeah, so it's about the same price that we've got." Uh, here for the uh, for the Tamron. Uh, well worth it though for that lens. For a travel lens, I think it's well worth it because like I said, you wouldn't have to, you'd only have to take one more lens. That and a wide angle lens, you're done. You could easily just take the 17 to 28 and that lens and be done for the whole trip. It, it really, if you look at it, that's what you could use for the whole trip. Um, George said, uh, I'm in the market for an inexpensive 100 to 400 millimeter. Um, but I'm uh, a bit weary, you're saying, of, of Sigma's heavy weight reputation. I'll have to wait uh, and see what Tamron does. Uh, I'm sure Tamron will be light and easier to carry all day. I'm sure they'll probably bring out something like that. Uh, you know, who knows what they're going to uh, get next. I sort of threw the other day, I said, oh, please bring out a wide angle prime. But I mean, I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what they release next. Uh, I think we're going to start to see a lot more lenses, though, that's for sure. Um, Greg said from Sigma's website, the Sigma 100 to 400 point, uh, f5 to 6.3 OS. Okay, yep. Oh, yeah, it did say OS, didn't it? Contemporary incorporates a powerful image stabilization of four steps. Okay, thanks, Greg. When combined with camera body and image stabilization built in, the lens corrects uh, for pitch and your axis rotations. Cool. Um, Alex said, what other lenses would you want Sony full frame, David, uh, other than the super wide angle prime? 
maybe the 100 or the 105 uh, could interest me, Alex. Uh, we, we did hear for quite a while that they were going to bring out a 101.4, I mean. Um, I think it was a 101.4. So that could interest me. Uh, I'd like a, a lens like that. Like I said, sometimes I can't use the 135 indoors due to the fact that uh, I haven't got enough room. So a lens like that would interest me. Um, so something like that could be interesting. Um, apart from that, I'm not sure. I, I also think Tamara may bring out Another lens Tamara may bring out is, uh, you know, a good um, uh, macro lens because I think it's their 90 mil macro is incredible. I'm pretty sure the ta it's the Tamara 90 or the 100. I think it's the 90. I can't remember. I think that's the one. It's stunning. So if they could bring that out on uh, Sony as well would be amazing. And I love the 35 that, that Tamron had. That was one of the – that was probably the best 35 I've ever used. Um, so I'd love them to bring that out as well. But Sony-wise, yes, I, I'd love them to bring out a wide angle, like so, like I said, something like a 12, 14 millimeter. Uh, I'd love, and and something around that hundred millimeter uh, end, just because you could use that more indoors, uh, and you wouldn't have you know that that sort of range you have to step back to get you do with a 135 so that could be interesting as well the longer lenses i don't use that much to be honest guys because i'm not really a landscape shooter or wildlife shooter so they don't really interest me that much the 100 to 400 if tamron brought one out i'd love to try it but it may be one that i wouldn't buy because i very rarely ever shoot that type of thing um, I'm more about doing portraits and things like that, you know, and if I'm doing landscapes, it's more like what I showed you before, you know, which was that scene with the trees with the light coming through and stuff like that. So I, I very rarely shoot those long focal lengths. For me, it's more about the wide angle. I mean, I can't really go past the Sony 24. I mean, to be completely honest, I, I, I just love the Sony 24. Um, 1.4 and the 135. That they, they are my two lenses that I could just use forever. I think now after using that Tamron lens, if I went traveling though, I would probably get that Tamron lens to do travel because it's so much easier. You don't have to worry about changing lenses and, and things like that. And you could just take the one lens for the day, um, you know, and then you could sort of... Um, Use that for the whole day and perhaps carry a wide angle if you wanted to go for some more wide angle stuff. So I love that. You've got the macro side to it as well. So I think I'd probably definitely get that Tamron and I will probably get that next time I do a bigger trip. Um, so what else are people saying? Um, uh 17 to 28 and 28 to 200 will be yeah i agree it would be that that is the perfect rob uh, that is the perfect combination 17 to 28 and the 28 to 75 would be unbelievable for travel um tony said uh christopher uh, frost north borders and i'm uh, just saying i've already tested it it weighs less than the gm and similar sharpness thanks tony interesting that's the 100 to 400 you're talking about is it See, again, how lucky are we now that we can buy these third-party lenses and they're sort of, you know, getting close or even the same sort of sharpness as a GM? I mean, I, like I said, I think the Tamron is way better than the Sony equivalent, way better. Um, Greg said, weight, Sony E-mount, 114 grams. Um, is that for the 100 to 400, was it, Greg? Um, Ike's here as well. Good day, Ike. How are you? Uh, Sony uh, GM weight is one three nine five. Well, it's not too bad, is it then? Um, Sony eighty five one point two. Oh yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, a, a new eighty five, a thirty, a one point two eighty five would be unbelievable. I've always been really jealous of the Canon eighty five one point two. Um, so if Sony could bring out that type of lens for when you need it, would be fantastic. I would love that. Um, what else have we got? Um, Alex also said, "Never, uh, you never shoot the Sony 100 GM." No, that no, I haven't. Uh, I've never shot that. Um, I've never uh, used that at this stage. Uh, that's also uh, it's what's that? That's the um, I always forget the name of it. That's got the special uh, ability to give the really smooth bokeh. Uh, I, I don't, the funny thing is, I'm not really a fan of it. I, I tend to think that the that 100 GM, some of you aren't, <laughs> I, I think it tends to look fake. 
uh, I think the bokeh and everything in the background is so perfect in that lens that I'm not, I don't really like it personally. Um, I think I'd prefer, also it's around a 5.6, so that's an issue, that's as fast as that lens gets. The MTF lens, isn't it? Um, yeah, oh, STF, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. I'd prefer them to bring out a, just say a good 100 mil 1.4 or something like that. Um, you know, if they could do that, that would, I would like that much better than the STF lens. Um, but no tripod foot. Yeah, interesting. That's a good point, Greg. There doesn't seem to be one with that lens, does there? So that that's interesting uh, as well. So are there any last questions, guys? Uh, with the um, video, stay tuned. I'll try and do them as quickly as possible. I'm, I'm probably going to do the music video first, only because um, Renee would like that to give to some dance studios. Um, so I'm probably going to uh, do that first. And that was all shot with the um, 28 to 200. So stay tuned for that to see how it is. And then in the coming days, just the next few days, oh, it's popping, is it? Thanks, Dana. Uh, in the coming days, I'll also put out the full review of that as well and, and talk you through the whole, how the whole lens went. Um, so, you know, stay tuned for that as well. Um, now I said, yeah, it does look fake if you're Photoshopping someone into a blurry scene. Yeah, it does look like that to me. That That's the issue with that STF lens. It looks like you've been Photoshopped in. And that's the part I don't like about it. Uh, but that's a personal thing. Others that have bought it may love it. Uh, I'm not a fan at all of that STF. Um, so, but that's me. Um, what else have we got? So, yeah, so stay tuned for that. I'll be back, too, with Aaron next week as well on um, Wednesday Australian time. It'll be um, Tuesday USA time and Europe time. So we'll be back with the Behind the Photo Show. So stay tuned for that as well. Um, apart from that, guys, I'll just see if you have any last questions before we finish for the day. Um, I'm going to start editing this audio. Uh, Carl said audio is fine. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, don't know. It could have been um, maybe the internet. Yeah, it could be Greg. It could be that. So who knows? Um, so apart from that, to sum up the day, uh, yesterday I've showed you the results. I'm so happy with that Tamron lens. If you do want to put it on pre-order, I'll see if I can stick it in the links below. Um, Phil, uh, it's fine. I mean, the, it, the lens is fantastic. I've showed you the results you got from it. It surprised me how sharp it was at 200 mil. I was really surprised at that, actually. Uh, and it seems to work well the whole range through. Uh, I'll talk about it when we do the um, full review. There is a little bit of vignetting occasionally through the lens, but that doesn't bother me at all. I often add vignetting anyway. But there is vignetting there. But uh, I suppose once there's a lens profile in Lightroom, that would be taken out. Or you could easily um, adjust the, that uh, vignetting in Lightroom. Uh, I, uh, I had to do a shoot yesterday. I was shooting with the new Tamron 28 to 200. So I had to get a review done. So uh, there was no Friday show yesterday, so I've done it today. <laughs> so that, <coughs> that's where that came from. Um, I came in late. Uh, what, an A5 versus the A6600? Uh, That's a tough move away from APS-C versus full frame. Yeah, the a well, we don't know what that A5 is going to be, it, it, whether it's going to be APS-C or whether it's going to be full frame. I mean, uh, we still have to wait and see. I think they're sort of hinting it's going to be full frame, though. Um, but who knows? I mean, we, we've got to wait and see what that is. So thanks, if, thanks so much, everyone. Um, if you can, give us a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the show. If you have any questions about the lens at all, leave them down below. I've still got it for a few days yet, so I'll probably do some more testing uh, and things around um, to, to get that full review done. Um, but stay tuned as well for the... Um, video reviews that come up in the next few days. Dwayne just said, I'd love to know how good uh, is the Sony 35 1.8. Almost bought it for street, uh, but people don't really talk about it. I found it was, it was okay, Dwayne. I mean, um, not brilliant, um, but it was pretty good. Uh, yeah, it was, it was okay. Uh, I certainly wouldn't hesitate to, you know, shoot with it though. That's for sure. I mean, I'd certainly use it. All right, guys, have a great weekend, everyone. Stay safe. Um, and I'll see you all in the next video uh, in probably a few days. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much.